Hi everyone, Trish Triumph O'Sullivan here again, and I'm gonna to talk to you today about different types of cameras. So we're gonna start off with the DSLR or SLR, um, which SLR stands for Single Lens Reflex. And this is the camera that is the most popular with professionals. So professional people will, would def, will definitely, uh, this would be their number one, this would be their go-to camera. Um, it's definitely the one that people, whoops, it's definitely one that professionals use the most. It's the most versatile um, of all the cameras, and that's why professionals use it, because they have the most choices with it. Um, most cameras that are, uh, that are single lens reflex nowadays are digital, and they have the option to be automatic. So that's a lot of choice. You can have them on automatic, or you can have them on fully manual which is what we want to do in this class. We want to have them on fully manual. If you end up using a single lens reflex camera, you want to be able to do all the controls manually. So let's talk about what, what, what the camera is and what's good about it. So it is the first choice for professionals. Okay. First choice for professionals, and it has direct through the lens viewing. So when you look at, this, at a camera, a single lens reflex camera from the side, you would have the lens, right, the body, like that. Oops. And when the light comes in through the lens, the way you view it, you view direct through the lens, um, and there's a mirror here. And the light hits the mirror, and it goes up, and then there's another mirror that it hits, and it goes out through the viewfinder, right, to your eye. So there's your eye right there, you're looking. And so the light, the, the subject, the, what you're looking at, the light comes through here, hits the mirror, goes up another mirror in there. So in order to take the photograph, the mirror has to pop up out of the way. So, in or, so for, the, for the photograph to hit the film plane, because we just talked about the parts of a camera, right, um, the mirror actually has to go up out of the way, this way, so it moves completely, and then the light comes in and makes your exposure. That creates your photograph, right? Whether it's on a sensor for a digital camera or film. So, that said, that's the camera from the side. Let's remove that. So let's talk about what's good and bad about it. Um, so the, first of all, direct through the lens viewing is great because you're seeing exactly what the camera is seeing and that can be really important. And um, so the pros, um, pros for this camera, uh, manual control. So you can have fully manual control. Okay, um, also it has very high quality images. Okay, um, it's, it has interchangeable lenses. So you can change the lenses. Um, it's great for all types of photography. So it's, it's very versatile. So you can take portraits, landscapes, whatever you want with it. It works great for all of them. Um, whoops. Uh, there's no parallax error. We'll talk about what parallax error is later. So no parallax error on this one. Um, now there are some cons. Right? There's some things that are bad about it. So if we're gonna look at the cons, um, one of them is it's heavy and larger. Whoops. So it's heavy and large. Um, it makes a noise. So when that mirror pops up out of the way, it makes that click clack sound that we think of when we think of photographs. It's the sound that you can actually put onto your phone. Um, you can put that fake sound on to your phone to make it sound like you're taking a photograph, right? That's that sound. So um, it makes a noise, so it's, it can be noisy. Right. 
Um, also, it has moving parts, so it the, the, has more moving parts than most cameras, um, so more things can go wrong, so that, that's not good. So there's, there's a little more complicated. Um, so we'll put moving parts. And then next, um, you, can, you can possibly get a little bit of, of, of blur when that, when that um, especially at a very slow shutter speeds, when that mirror moves out of the way. Um, and also it can be more costly. So we'll just put more dollars on there, All right? So I'm gonna show you an SLR, okay? This is one of my cameras, it's a Minolta. I'm gonna hold it up here. Um, you can see there's the body and the lens. There's the focus, the focus ring and the aperture. You can even hear it clicking. Right? You might even be able to see the aperture. If I hold it like this, you might even be able to see the aperture opening and closing when I move that. Um, and then if you look on the top, uh, you'll see exactly what we talked about. There's the shutter release button, right? There's the, uh, the shutter speed control. There is the film advanced lever, right? Um, and here's the film rewind on this side. So you can see there and the ISO numbers, right? And if you look at the back, you can see the view finder right there where you can look through. And of course, when you look through here, you're gonna see right out the lens. You're gonna see directly out the lens through this series of mirrors. And then on the top, there's where you can put the flash. A lot of, uh, of, a lot of digital cameras have a built-in flash. This one has a hot shoe flash where you put an external flash on there. Um, and that's basically, what the camera looks like. So you can kind of see it there, I'll turn it a little bit. Right. It is on the heavy side. So um, although I like a single lens reflex quite a bit, I'm not really thrilled with the heaviness of it because um, they can be kind of bulky and heavy and hard to move around. So that's the single lens reflex camera. Right. So that's the first choice of professionals. So pros like it, okay? Um, so let's go on to the next one. We'll erase this and we'll go right back to... Now the second type of camera that's really popular um, is a compact digital camera, right? So of course there's all different kinds. I'm going to show you um, the one that I have. So here it is. Um, I have a little tiny, a little miniature one. It's really small. You can see, you know, compared to my hand, right? It's kind of a large, it's kind of a small camera. Um, there's the shutter release button on the top, just like we have for a, for a single lens reflex. And then there's the viewing screen on the back and some of the controls that this particular camera has. Um, there's pros and cons for this kind of a camera too. Can you use this kind of a camera in class? Absolutely, there's enough control on one of these small little cameras that you can do some cool stuff with it. So yes, you could use a digital, compact digital point and shoot camera. We call these point and shoot because they're mostly automatic, um, although they usually do have some control, more control than you might realize when you, when you first get it, and you can actually do quite a bit with it. Uh, so put this back in this case and we'll talk about pros and cons for, for this one. So um, the, compact, the compact digital camera also has pros and cons, and there's also a, there's also a subcompact, right, where it's really little. And those usually have not much control at all. They don't have a whole lot of control. So the, uh, the compact digital has pros and cons, okay? Now, so the pros, it comes in lots of styles and colors. Whoops. Can't even spell today. <laughs> That's not good. Let's see. My spelling can be pretty messed up sometimes, so no worries on that. So let's see. Um, so it comes in lots of styles and colors. Okay. And then. Um, it has, it, usually it has a range of features. 
so you can have some control on it. Most of them will do video, right? So you can, you can also um, shoot video with your camera. Um, it takes abuse, it's meant to take abuse. So it's meant to be able to be dropped, um, maybe even submersed in water. Some of them are waterproof and water resistant now. Um, and basically, they're small, compact, and portable. You know, a lot of times pocket size, right? You know, very, very portable, small and compact. Uh, and then also, they're inexpensive, okay? So they don't cost that much, right? They're, they're, not, they're not expensive cameras. But there's cons to it too, of course, as with everything, pros and cons. Um, so usually there's no manual control. Right? That's not good for a camera. You wanna be able to control it um, more. Um, you can't change lenses. So those, that's called a fixed lens. They have a fixed lens. Um, a lot of times you only have, you're gonna only have a monitor view, which is not as good. It's not as good as actually being able to look through the lens, right? Because the, the resolution on the monitors just aren't as good. Um, you can have shutter lag. Okay. And also, it's a lower picture quality. Okay, so that's a compact digital camera. And, uh, but they're popular. I have one, um, I have a, a couple of them, and I use them a lot because when I'm traveling and I'm going somewhere, I really, really like to have something that I could just put in my pocket or my purse and I don't have to carry a separate camera bag with a bunch of lenses and stuff. I'm a lot of times more likely to use my, my compact digital than my phone because the compact digital is still better than your phone camera. Just saying, if you want good quality photos, you might want to think about that because you want to have um, your photos be, be you know high enough quality that you can reproduce them. Um, if you'll notice your phone camera often takes pretty poor quality photos. Um, and so, and, and, but it's still, the contact digital is still better than your phone. Okay, so next, we're gonna have what we call a range finder. These are also sometimes called viewfinder cameras. So I'm gonna put it in parentheses. I don't wanna um, confuse you with the viewfinder because uh, there's also a camera called a view camera, okay? So we're gonna go with range finder. So the range finder um, is a camera that has, you know, it has some, uh, some good and some, some bad with it, um, just like every other one. <laughs> there's pros and cons, and I'm gonna show you what a range finder looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. The range finder, it's called a range finder because, let me take the lens cap off here. It's called a range finder because you view through this little window on the side. All right, you can see the little window. There's a little back viewing port right there. Okay, and that's where you look through. And that's something that can actually cause parallax error. And we'll talk about that later. But um, the nice thing about a, a, a range finder camera um, is it has full manual control. So you'll see I have my shutter speed up on the top. There's my lens, there's, there's my rewind button for my film. Okay, this is a film camera. There's my shutter release button. Okay, that shows how many, where my pictures are, how many pictures I have left on the roll. And then you'll see on the lens, um, it has a focus ring. Let's see if you can see that there. Right, okay. and it has you can see the uh, aperture ring. So if I, if I change the aperture ring, you might be able to, if I hold it up close, you might be able to actually see the aperture open and close there. 
I like this camera a lot for traveling because I have full manual control on it. Now the downside of that is there's, it's a fixed lens. I can't change my lenses on it. Whereas on the SLR, you can change any kind of different lens. Oh, and it does not, this one does not have a built-in flash. It also has a hot shoe flash. And we'll talk about that later. But you can see how small it is compared to my hand, right? It's definitely portable. So let's talk about pros and cons for the rangefinder. Okay, so pros. Dude, it has manual control. We like that. That's the best. Okay, it's lightweight. Okay. Um, they're usually fast and quiet. Okay, that's good because you it don't and they, they work well in low light. They're good for low light conditions and because they are fast. Um, now there's cons on that too, right? We talked about we can't change the lens, so it's a fixed lens. The lens is fixed, it's not changeable. Um, it's not good for close-ups. So it's not good for working close, like a close uh, portrait, anything you really have to get close to your subject, okay? And you can get what they call parallax error. So I'm gonna tell you what parallax error is really quick so you can get it. Um, it's actually pretty simple. It's a fancy name for something totally simple. So when I hold this camera up to you, up to the, to the video, uh, lens right now, you can see that your view comes through this side window, but the photo is taken through the lens, right? The lens is the, where the light comes in, all right? So the parallax error means that what you see through the viewfinder right here right, is a little bit different than what you see through what the actual photo is going to look like, right? Because they're not in the exact same spot. One is here and one is here. Right? One is up here and one is down there. So there's just a little bit of difference. So that's what parallax error means. It means that what you're seeing when you take the photo is not going to be exactly the same as what, you, what the camera sees through the lens. Um, and that can be a really important thing in, in some cases. Um, so pros and cons for rangefinder. Um, I happen to love my rangefinder. It's been all over the the world with me, every time I've traveled someplace, I've taken it because I can have manual control, but it is compact and easy to bring with. I don't have to change lenses. Okay. Um, and then we have, um, uh, there's t t uh, a couple other different kinds of cameras. One is called a twin lens reflex. And I'll show you some photos of those later. Right now, I want to just we'll just go through it. Um, so the twin lens reflex is one of those kind of boxy cameras. Let me see if I go like that. And just like the name sounds, you've got two lenses, right? One lens you look through, and one lens takes the photograph. Right, and you look, your, your eye looks down through the top, and usually there's like a film winder on the side here. Um, so here's the pros and cons of this. Uh, one, and these are both pros and cons, so I'm not going to list them really separately. It's film only. Right, they don't make it digital. Um, usually it's medium format. Medium format means it's a larger negative, so it's better than 35 millimeter. So the actual, the actual negative is about this big, right? That's pretty big, it's a couple, like a couple inches across, square negative. Um, it's very quiet. Okay. Um, it's less expensive. 
less dollars than an SLR, right? And it's full manual control. So these are great art cameras. Um, I think that a lot of, a lot of uh, photographers that want to be do more artsy work will work with a medium format because the larger negative has better quality. We'll talk about that in another quick lecture. But um, it's a really good camera uh, if, if you want to get into trying medium format and trying to do some fun stuff with your camera, okay? Um, so that's one. And then another one, and I'll show you my medium format camera really quick. Now, my, my medium form, format camera, um, I use this to do my art photography with. I'll, I'll open it up, you can kind of see the case. Um, it's a cool old camera um, with a nice leather case. It's probably from the 1930s, 1920s or 30s. And so if I open it up here, you can see that the leather pops off and you can see that the Here's the camera. This is called. This is a viewfinder camera, a rangefinder camera, because there's a little uh, window that you look through from the back to the front, and this is the cool part of it. Now I want you to watch this because when I pop this button here with my thumb, the top pop front pops open, and my lens pops out. So you can see from the side. This is a medium format camera. It uses um, two and a quarter inch negatives, okay, film. And you can see there, it has full manual control. So it has full control of the shutter speed and the, um, and the aperture. Um, and I like it because I can do some really cool stuff with it, including double exposures. And double exposures are something that you can't do with a digital camera. It's absolutely impossible. But this has all, this is, has the, the film um, uh, winders. It has the shutter release button there. And then this button is the one that opens it up. Right. And it, it's very compact. I like it a lot because I can do cool stuff, but it's not a big, giant camera. So it just closes right back up like that. And I can put it on my on my arm like a cool purse, right? <laughs> so the next type of um, camera I want to talk about is a crossover camera. So a crossover camera, you guys, is kind of between a, a uh, it's a cross between, let me write it down up here. It's a cross between a single lens reflex and say a rangefinder camera. So it has some of the best or, or, a, di or a compact point and shoot. Um, it usually has a, uh, it has some manual control. Right? Um, and so this is, this, this will be the pros. The pros are you got some manual control, you have good quality pit, pit photographs because usually the sensor is a little larger. I'm going to put pics there for space. Um, it's smaller than an SLR. Okay, or a DSLR. Um, it's quiet. Okay, um, and you can also get raw files out of it, right? So that means you can have some better quality photographs. Um, so there's some cons though. Let's see if we have room for cons here. So there's also some cons. Um, this, the same con is some manual control, right? It's not fully manual. Um, you can't do that. It has a fixed lens, so you can't change lenses, okay? Um, and it's a viewfinder, so, whoops. So you don't have, uh, you can have that parallax error if you, if you want. And it's usually um, an LCD monitor only, right? Which can also drain the battery if that's the only way that you can view your photographs. 
So the crossover, that would be like a Canon Rebel. You can use that for this class, it'll work fine. You've got some manual control, but it's not completely manual, okay? Um, so it's not quite as good. All right, and then finally, um, we have what we call a view camera. Okay, and there's a lot of different styles on this, but I'm gonna give you a basic drawing. It's the simplest of cameras, it's a big box. Um, if you go over to Green's camera and look in their window, whoops, you'll see a big giant view camera. Um, this is the number one camera used by photographic artists. So artists really like this. Um, it's usually a lens right in the middle. The film is, us is usually put on the back of the camera and the film comes in sheets, like a sheet of paper, right? So you'd have like a, a sheet of paper like this, right, as, that you would stick in the back um, that is the film. Okay, that's, it's not really a sheet of paper, it's film, but it's that, it can be that size. And the sizes are, are four by five, four inches by five inches for film, eight by 10, and 11 by 14. Those are the, the main sizes of film for these big box cameras that are called view cameras. So this is like the original camera, right? Pretty simple, it's a box, with a hole in it, in this case there's a lens there, right, so there's the lens, um, and you actually look through glass at the back and look right through the lens, just um, so you have the best view. You're not looking through mirrors or, you know, reflected images, you're looking directly through the lens from the back of the camera. Now there's pros and cons, just like all of these cameras have goods and bads, so let's see the pros. So the pros, for this camera is you have through the lens viewing, right? So you're looking directly from the back of the camera into the front. So if that was your eyeball right there, you'd be looking right through, okay? So through lens. Okay, through lens view. Um, full manual control. So you got full manual control. It can be film or digital. Right? And you get top quality images. Right? And top quality, this is the first choice for not only artists, but commercial photographers because they're going to have the best quality images. Um, the sensors are bigger and the film is bigger. In this case, size does matter, okay? The bigger the negative or the bigger the sensor, the better quality photo, okay? That's really important to know. So you've got, it's called large format. So large format means you have better quality, right? So that's why it's number one for artists and commercial photographers. Now, there are cons. I'm, I'm going to erase this to make sure that you can see the cons. All right. So the cons are that it's big, bulky, and heavy. So it's not as easily transported. It's a little bit more difficult to transport. Um, so not easy to transport at all. Um, you have to have a tripod. Right, that's really important. And you have to have a focus cloth. What's a focus cloth, you ask? Good question. A focus cloth is the black cloth that you see with those old-fashioned photographers standing in front of a, a big box camera, right? The view camera, big box camera, and you see it on a tripod standing there, and the photographer has a black like blanket over their head. Well, you have to have that because otherwise it's hard to see through the, the, the camera if there's sun shining on it. Just like if you try to look at your phone screen with sun shining on it, you can't 
see it very well. So you have to have be in the shade. So they have to put a, a what they call a focusing cloth underneath. You can see that's an F there. There we go. Um, uh, over the top of their head so they can see it. Um, and you have to have lots of equipment to take with you. You kind of have a couple suitcases of stuff um, just to uh, go out. Whoops just to go out and shoot. Um, so those are the cons of the view camera. Uh, that concludes our talk about cameras. Oh, except one more thing. I do wanna say that nowadays, they actually have what they call a mirrorless SLR or DL, DSLR. Um, it's a camera that I personally have. It's kind of my dream camera. Um, it, it's great because there's no mirrors. It's new technology. Sony came out with it first. They're like the pioneers of having a mirrorless with you know no mirror, SLR. Uh, and so I have one of their cameras. I really like it. And it has all the pros of an SLR, right? You can change lenses, fully manual. Um, with the digital, you, know, you can also have it on automatic if you want to. Uh, and you can shoot video. It's a great camera and it, and it has a lot of the advantages of being more lightweight, smaller, and more portable. So that's the lesson for today on different kinds of cameras. And when I'm telling you about this, I want you to think about what camera is gonna work for you, right? What is gonna be the best for you? What camera are you going to want? If, you're a prof if you wanna become a professional photographer or you wanna go into a profession that uh, uses photography on a regular basis, such as marketing, um, I would recommend that you purchase an, a DSLR or an SLR for your work because that's gonna be the most versatile camera for you. Um, if you're just taking this class for credit, use whatever camera you can find. If you can borrow one, that's great. Um, but if, you, if you're looking like maybe to the future you'd like to take more photos, you might consider a crossover camera. Right? And of course, there's used cameras, and we'll talk about used cameras in our next lecture. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in class. Let's see if it, we did it.